to offer this Ghana in the memory of one of your friends who had died uh, tragically in a motorcycle accident, uh, one of uh, Christian Richardson. And also, this uh, is also in the memory of uh, Sumeda Panagoda, uh, someone's uh, father who died of, of cancer. So, I'm going to have you observe the uh, refuges and five precepts. So, go ahead and uh, recite. And now we'll pass it three times. Hold a hand like this. Okay. 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 Repeat after me. Bundang Saranga Chami. Dhamman Sarananga Chami Sangam Sarananga Chami Duty Yampi Buddham Sarananga Chami Duty Yampi Dhamman Sarananga Chami Duty Yampi Sangam Sarananga Chami Duty Yampi Buddham Sarananga Chami Duty Yampi Dhamman Sarananga Chami Duty Yampi Sangam Sarananga Chami Isarana Gamanang Sampunang Mahamante Panati Pata Veramani Sika Padang Samadiami Panati Pata Veramani Sika Adina Dana Veramani Sika Padang Samadiami Adina Dana Veramani Sika Kame su micha chara veramani sika padam samadhyami Kame su micha chara veramani sika padam samadhyami Usavada veramani sika padam samadhyami Usavada veramani sika padam samadhyami Sura Mirya Majapamagatana Veramani Sika Padam Samadhyami Sura Mirya Majapamagatana Veramani Sika Padam Samadhyami Isranena Saddim Panchasilam Dhamang Sadhukam Suratitam Katawa Pamadena Sampadetu Silena Sugatin Yanti, Silena Boga Sampada, Silena Nibutin Yanti, Dasma Silam Visu Dali. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Now, this last uh, stanza that I recited, for those who may not know it, this is. Uh, uh, Silena Sugati Nyanti. It means uh, by observing the five precepts, uh, may you attain a good rebirth. By, by uh, observing the five precepts, may you attain wealth. And by uh, observing the five precepts, may you reach uh, Nibbana. So, therefore, one should pre purify. The, their practice of skillful uh, conduct. <clears throat> okay, now uh, we're going to offer this uh, offerings of flowers and food.
uh, to the Buddha. Now, of course, we know the Buddha is not the uh, uh, your Buddha. Uh, eat that food or anything. So it's symbolic. But the flowers are also symbolic, especially because of this meaning of this uh, puja to me. So you come here to uh, honor the memory of two persons who passed away. One was a young person who probably shouldn't have died so young, at least we, we say that, and an older person that was already fairly old and died of uh, you know, some disease. So that's not so unusual. Uh, but nevertheless, it shows two different types of death. A young person can die, an old person dies. And they don't necessarily have to be sick to die because this young person had died in an untimely accident and so on. So uh, the, the flowers, now right now the flowers look very beautiful, right? Maybe they smell also good. What's going to happen in two weeks? We don't give any more water to these plants. They start to wilt. Anybody have an idea? What's going to happen? So the flowers are going to lose their color. They're going to lose their smell. They're going to shrivel up. Just like an old person, their skin shrivels up when they start getting older, right? Uh, so it's a symbolic. So when we offer the flowers, we're saying, just as these flowers are beautiful now, they're going to decay and die. Just as this body, it might be beautiful now, strength and, and beauty and so on, but uh, as you grow older, you reach a certain age, and all that starts to go downhill. So it's, it's simply a reminder not to get too proud or vain about one's looks or strength now, because that can be taken away uh, very quickly. So these are all kind of symbolic things when we do a puja, we should keep these things in mind, the, the, the deeper meaning. Okay. So we're going to uh, chant the traditional gathas for uh, offering these things to the Buddha. So you can uh, re repeat after me. And, and then also the candlelight is the, 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 the symbolic of the Dhamma, the light of wisdom. <coughs> Ganasara Pagitina Ganasara Pagitina Deepena Tamadam Sina Deepena Tamadam Sina Tiloka Deepang Sambuddam Tiloka Deepang Sambuddam Pujayami Tamonadam Pujayami Tamonadam Vanaganda Gunopitam Vanaganda Kusuma Santa Ting, Etang Kusuma Santa Ting, Ujayami Munindas, Ujayami Munindas, Siri Panya Tatagata, Siri Panda Tatagata, Ujami Buddang Kusumi Nanina. Chitti 
Especially in terms of the nature of life. Now, as we're coming together to honor these two persons, uh, especially in sharing the merits and uh, of these two departed uh, people, persons. And as I already mentioned, uh, you know, a young person has died and an old person has died, and death is the actual, the only thing certain in life. But life is not certain, because some babies die before coming out of the womb, don't they? And some babies die after two hours out of the womb, or one week after the womb, or one year or two years old, all the way up to a hundred years. People are dying from one reason or another, and no one can control that, really. Uh, and that has a lot to do with the karma. But anyway, the point is that when you are born, you get a one-way ticket. That means to death, to the graveyard, or to the funeral pyre. So death is the only thing certain in life. Life is not certain. But we don't know when that death would come, as we can see. This young person probably thought they were going to live, they were planning out their college career, or you know, decided they're going to become this or that in life, and unexpectedly, they're, they're gone from this world. And uh, there's a there's a saying by a wise man uh, that tomorrow or the next life, we don't know which will come first, right? 
because you might be thinking you're going to go somewhere tomorrow, like perhaps this young person did, and there was no tomorrow. There was a next life. So I'm only saying that because this is one of the realities of life and that uh, we should uh, be mindful of the fragility of, of life and that this life is a very precious thing. To get a human birth is a very precious thing uh, as part of the, the Buddhist uh, sort of uh, cosmological belief that you know, when you die the mind continues on and is reborn in some other realm according to its come. And the way you live is the way that you're going to die, basically. Uh, if you live with a, a lot of uh, you know, greed or hatred or other mental problems, and, and then when you die, the, the mind will uh, you know, be confused and be attracted to places where you know, that kind of mental state uh, will continue. But by practicing the Dhamma and by purifying the Sila, as we mentioned in the, you know, in taking the, the Pancha Sila, one purifies uh, morality. Then uh, one that doesn't have uh, regrets. And when death happens, it doesn't have regrets. A lot of people die because they have fear, because they have regrets. That they, they hurt others, they abused others, they're holding grudges, they haven't forgiven people, they have hatred, they have greed. And if you die with these kind of thoughts in your mind, then the, the next life is also going to be full of the, the same thing. Uh, so that's why we want to, by practicing Dhamma, the whole practice of Dhamma is actually, you could say, preparation for death. But because we don't know when death will happen, we can't put off saying, I'll practice Dhamma when I retire or when I get older. Because as we see, not only this friend of yours, uh, has died at a young age, probably not even 20 years old. 24. 24. But you, we read every day in the newspapers about kids being died, uh, even, at, you know, as I said, from one year old on up. But certainly, you know, hundreds and thousands of teenagers die from all kinds of reasons. Uh, and again, that's according to the comment. So, uh, so this is the reality of, uh, of old age and death, and then this uh, other uh, man, uh, other father? Uh, My friend, yeah. Yeah, okay, yes, so uh, he's, he died because he was already 69 years old, so that's almost an average uh, age of uh, death in this country. Maybe a little longer, he died of some diseases, so uh, it's not unusual. But still, there are many people that live a lot longer. My mother, lived to 102 years old. She just died uh, three months ago. Uh, so, you know, people live to be a ripe old age and relatively healthy. My mom didn't suffer from any real type, any kind of diseases. She was driving a car until she was 99 years old even. Um, but anyway, uh, that's, it's just show you that uh, uh, everybody lives according to the kind of karma that they brought with them from a past life, as well as the karma that you do in this life. And so that's why the whole practice of Dhamma is about being careful about uh, how you live, and to live with mindfulness, and to help to, to try to, you know, to follow the Sila Samadhi and Panya, to follow the Noble Eightfold Path, that helps to minimize accidents, to minimize the pain and suffering that will be coming later. And especially with young people, uh, you know, the, the abuse of intoxicants is quite rampant. Not only young people, but even middle-aged people and older people, there, there are so much uh, drug use is rampant, and including myself. I also used, uh, you know, quite a lot of recreational drugs when I was younger, and I almost died from it. But luckily, I discovered the Dhamma before that happened. And I was able to recognize the kind of foolish things I was doing, not taking care, and just following the crowd, doing what other people want to do, you know, in, you know, in order to get accepted by our friends and this and that. And they, oh, come on, just, you know, take a little coke, you know, it's not going to hurt you. Or, you know, take these pills 
things, and, and it is so easy to get hooked, you know. And, and we can see that problem. It's so you know, it, so many young people are getting, getting out. Junior high school kids are getting addicted to drugs in high schools and others. And these habits will continue. And some people, fortunately, uh, stop before it winds up in serious problems. Like I was able to, you know, to stop and turn around. But uh, that was because of the dumb. Uh, and, uh, and understanding the, the teachings of the Buddha. And understanding that uh, uh, the power of our mind also, especially. So, I just wanted to mention these few things, especially with young people, when you're, when so you're, you're growing, you're, you're deciding what you might want to do later on in the, in the life, but the habits that you cultivate now are the habits that you're going to carry with you. And that's why, especially for Buddhists, and many of you, or most of you, I think, are, you know, your, your parents are, are Buddhists and, and so on, and so they're trying to give you a, a good grounding in the Dhamma. And, uh, basic principles about the Dhamma so that you will carry these habits with you as you go out on your own. Now you might be living at home, so you're under the, the care of your parents and watchful eye, but when you go out and start living by yourself, your parents are not around to watch what you're doing. And it's, unless we have a good foundation in the Dhamma, it's very easy for our mind to get influenced by others. And unfortunately, in this country, the majority of people are not into the Dhamma and not practicing Dhamma. Many are, but still probably, I safely say, the majority are not. Uh, but still, uh, so maybe that's why it's important to have a good uh, foundation in the practice of Dhamma. And uh, uh, I know a lot of young people, they, they don't like to follow what their parents say. They think their parents are old fogies and you know, they're from the past and now, you know, we're new, you know, I'm generation Y or whatever they call themselves now. And, you know, they, they, they don't need to you know, follow the <laughs> advice of the parents and so on. But, uh, you know, their parents have survived this long because they were following the Dhamma. And uh, so anyway, uh, not to belabor that, but, uh, so as we uh, remember these uh, young people and, uh, and these other departed uh, people, we, sh we should not take life for granted. Most people take life for granted. They think, they think they're going to live for a long time, especially young people. But we can see that you, you never know. Even the strongest athletes can drop dead on the basketball court or some other place because of some unknown gene or karmic thing that uh, you know they were carrying with them that you know, caused their heart to give out or you know, something else. Uh, so many you know young people have died from brain tumors and cancers. I, I get letters and emails quite often from people. Um, and we have you know a lot of these ceremonies for uh, younger people also who have died from so many uh, reasons. So, and, and the Dhamma, and having our mind clear, having a clear mind, and, and when you die, not having regrets, or, uh, and not having for, forgiven people or holding grudges, these are the kind of things that will cause your mind to, to go on and until it finally uh, experiences the, uh, the result of those kind of karmic conditions. So, again, we're going to now uh, you know, uh, try to share or transfer the merits of our good deed. Now, you're coming here on a Saturday, a nice day, right? It was a whole week. Of, well, cloudy, rainy weather, and then it's a nice day. So most people want to go to the beach, and most people want to go out. And, but instead, uh, taking this time to come to the temple uh, or to the center to uh, to do this uh, ceremony and having gratitude for uh, those uh, friends or relatives, uh, and sharing the merits. I mean, merits is a sort of a 
a little bit controversial subject, or especially with with non-Buddhist people, like most American people, they don't understand what the merits is, collecting merits. So merits means the good things that you do in life, as opposed to demerits. Like observing precepts is a very meritorious thing. Practicing meditation is a very meritorious thing. Practicing generosity is a meritorious thing. Uh, that means things that will lead us toward greater happiness in life, where demerits are the opposite of the, of the merits and lead you to more uh, suffering. So uh, we're sharing the merits of this uh, ceremony with these departed relatives. Now this uh, water pouring ceremony, I understand that maybe just one person would maybe not understand the meaning of this uh, Water pouring. So anybody who is uh, connected with these people that passed away, either the young, uh, the young boy who died in an accident, uh, their, their friends who knew that person, could come up. And uh, so the meaning of that, for those who may not know, is is uh, so in a large pitcher is water, and they're going to be pouring this water out into the cup. And then the cup fills up with the water and it overflows into the plate below. So that's a symbolic of like when, don't do it yet, wait. Uh, so when the, when it's raining, so rain falls on the mountain tops, right? And then it comes down into the canyons and becomes little rivers. And that flows down lower and lower and then the, those, those smaller rivers go into bigger rivers. And finally they get down to the base of the mountains and to the bigger rivers and eventually they flow into the ocean. So in the same way we're thinking when we're doing this water pouring is maybe the merits that we accumulate, uh, may they flow down and reach our departed relatives. So if some of your relatives who have died or friends were born in particularly some unfortunate places where they cannot accumulate merits, then the idea is that uh, you know, if, they're, if they can remember and know what you are doing, it will make them happy. And uh, hopefully those uh, from that, the, those merits, that, that will uh, uh, allow them to you know, uh, accumulate some good karma in that place, and then help them get uh, a better rebirth. Or even if they were already born in a Deva Loka, uh, they would uh, know what you are doing and it would make them happy. But anyway, uh, whether you believe in all that or not, that's another thing. But it's the idea that counts, that we're having gratitude and remembering what these uh, people have, you know, their life and so on, and the wish that wherever they are born, they will be able to have happiness and to be able to continue on in their life or you know, through their sansaric journey until finally they achieve or reach the, the goal of, of, of liberation from, from the wheel of birth and death, the wheel of suffering. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and, and uh, just uh, kind of touch that pot. And I'm going to be chanting some traditional gattas, which are basically meaning what I just explained to you. So first of all, recite idam me nyakti nam gotu itavantu nyakta. Flows, keep doing it until it overflows. Ayura rogi sampati saga sampati mevachu 
Ato nibbana sampati minate samijatu Bhavatu sabam mangalam rakantu sabadevata Sabbuddha nubhavina Sabbuddhamma nubhavina Sabbuddhamma nubhavina Sadasuti Bhavantuti Tavata chamehi sampadam punya sampadam Sambhe deva anumodantu Sambhe sampati sindhya Tavata chamehi sampadam punya sampadam Sambhe bhuta anumodantu Sambha Sampati Siddhiya Yutavata Chammehi Sampadam Punya Sampadam Sambhe Satta Anumodam Tu Sambha Sampati Siddhiya Sadhu Sadhu Extinct um, in this world, and um, will be. Are we gonna get forgiven even if it's you know it was too late for us to to really after life? Uh, can you repeat the last? Would it be um, it would would it be able to be um, be forgiven um, by Buddhist or um, by Buddha or by God? Um, I'm not a Buddhist. So I could even, um, I'm Christian, so I'm just trying to see if there's really life, um, new life after, or there's eternity, eternity life after, um, after. But even Christians believe in eternal life, right? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. So it's, it's not, but Buddhists don't believe in an eternal life like that, but they, that life goes on. So there's not just one heaven that people may go to after death and stay there for eternity, but there are many different levels of heavens, different types of heavens that people are born to because of their karma. But they're also impermanent, they aren't eternal. So a person might be born in a heaven world for a certain number of years, but they will pass away from that world just as you pass away from this world. If you still have karma to work out, you will leave the Deva realm and you could be reborn again as a human being, or you could be bo even born as a, an animal if you had done some bad karma. So, you know, the law of karma and rebirth is quite difficult to understand for an ordinary person. Uh, but uh, anyway, the idea of an eternal heaven, we don't believe in Buddhism. Uh, that the Buddha talked about Nibbana, but that's not really a heaven world. That's a release from all types of uh, uh, different conditioned worlds. So it's, it's kind of a different concept. Uh, but the, the idea of forgiving, that you, no one's going to forgive you. That even the Buddha doesn't forgive you. Your unconscious mind has to forgive you. That means we all have the God and the devil within us, just to use those kind of terms. That means we all have good qualities and we all have bad qualities. We all have the ultimate truth in us and we also have the ultimate delusions in us that we've been accumulating. So uh, by practicing Dhamma, uh, and then, so when we do a, an unskillful action, uh, underneath we know it's not right, but because of habits we, we do them anyway, right? Everyone knows it's not right to kill, but they do it anyway because they're under the passion, right? Strong attachments. They don't believe us. We'll kill them. You know, because they're attached to various things. Or to lie and cheat and steal and, and rape and pillage and plunder. All these are done because of greed and hatred. And they're unskillful actions. So uh, if we do something unmindfully, we forgive ourselves. Okay, I did this and I know it wasn't right. Okay, let me try harder. Not to do it again. So you're not asking God for forgiveness. You're asking yourself for forgiveness, knowing that, okay, we make mistakes. Uh, 
At least that's from our Dharma point of view, how we, how we would try to see that. Um, and you have to forgive yourself. Because all people are like, they're, they're like young babies trying to walk, right? A baby just doesn't come out of the womb and start walking. Now, it said the Buddha did that, but you know, apart from that, <laughs> you know, most people don't. So they, they start walking and they take one or two steps and they fall down, right? They're the baby. And they hold on to the table and, you know, because they're, they're, their knees are weak and their muscles are weak. It takes them a while to get this thing so they can start running around without falling down. So the same way, most people when it comes to, uh, it comes to the, living their life, they're like a baby because they don't know the truth. Even adults, 50, 60 years old, even the President of the United States, are like a baby because they don't know the truth. And they're going around telling lies and doing all kinds of other unwholesome things uh, that cause a lot of suffering for people. So uh, when we uh, uh, do something unskillful, uh, you know, we have to forgive ourselves, but not give in and say, just keep repeating it. You forgive yourself in order to reinforce in your mind, I'm going to try harder not to tell this lie, not to spread this rumor about somebody else, not to, you know, uh, whatever it is, breaking any the principles. So, so anyway, that's the way we see the idea of about forgiveness. Yeah. And especially when it comes time where people are like with your own family members, there's a lot of karma connected with families. And unfortunately, in some families, people die with grudges against their brothers or sisters and their, you know, the other people like that. And that's very bad because that will be the reason why they're going to be reborn again in order to solve those problems once and for all. And so by forgiving people, especially before they die, uh, you know, whatever I've done to you, please you know, forgive me for doing that, even if it's hard, you have to do that. And that'll free your own mind also, as well as hopefully the other person will not be able to hold any grudges themselves against you. But, um, so anyway, I think uh, that may be enough for this explanation. Any other last questions? Did I help you? Uh, yeah.